Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. This video, I'm going to be doing something a little special because I'm going to be telling you guys why I left IBM. Now, if you don't know what IBM is, well, it's one of the, the most established tech companies having been around for over 100 years, and I think they employ over 350,000 people. So this is a well-established company with very good job positions. So why would I leave such a company? Well, I guess you'll have to watch this video to find out. Now, before we get started, I do encourage you to check out our sponsor, Mailer Lite. This is a newsletter software where you can create automated newsletters, or if you just want to send out a newsletter whenever you want, you can use MailerLite. I really recommend this if you are hoping to start building a portfolio and start getting your name out there, sharing what you're learning in the tech field. Using a newsletter tool is one of the best ways to go. And what sets MailerLite apart is one, the price is very well, Two, it's very simple, so you don't have all the extra complicated stuff you really don't need. So if you want to start doing a newsletter, I would recommend MailerLite. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description below. And I think you can get started for free, so you know, why wouldn't you try it? So when I told the world that I was leaving IBM, I got a surge of message from pretty much two groups of people. One group assumed that I had some kind of beef with IBM, and I left, and then they just continued to basically have a conversation with me about all the reasons they're so glad I left IBM and all the reasons that uh, whatever, IBM's this terrible company, blah, 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 blah. And then there was the other group of people, which was the complete opposite, which is like, why in the world would you leave such a perfect job, <laughs> perfect company where you get everything you need and you get paid well? So what in the world? Why is this so black and white? Why are some people like, oh? So glad you quit. And then the other group is like, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna try and break down in this video. Well, pretty much any tech company you work with is going to have some things that you don't like about them or something your friends don't like about them or your parents or whatever it might be. That's because there's no such thing as a perfect company. That being said, I don't wanna be all negative about IBM. They're doing a lot of things I do appreciate and do like. They have great initiatives such as IBM Call for Code which is an initiative to basically help people in the time of natural disasters. We're making great software to help people achieve new things with artificial intelligence and, and data management. So IBM was doing a lot of things that I would be proud of, that I would say, hey, this is why I like working for IBM. So if you're wondering why I left, here is the answer. It is because, oh, another thing, whenever you have some kind of job, <laughs> there's going to be an expense you have to pay, right? It's not all about you getting paid. So this is known as opportunity costs. So anything you do in life has opportunity costs. Basically, what are you giving up in order to pursue this? And with a nice job that has good benefits and high pay, there is going to be some very high opportunity costs, especially just starting out. I have not developed the expertise in the, the career capital to basically be entitled to particular things. So I'm at the, the bottom of the tier, right? I, I'm starting this job. There's going to be a lot of sacrifice on my part to get this job. So that is one of the things you have to realize whenever you're considering a job or a career, there will be costs. You really need to weigh things out. This is a scale. So if on one side we have a job and the other we have no job. So IBM or no IBM, which one is worth more? So essentially, if your opportunity costs, the things you're missing out on by taking this job is worth more than what the job is paying you, you should leave that job. Now, do be financially sane. Don't do anything that's going to throw your family or your life in complete jeopardy. <laughs> but you do want to pursue things that are of the highest value. So if not having the job is of higher value to you, then that's what you would pursue. So I don't understand how people can come up to me and say, oh, don't, don't leave your job, or oh, take this job, when you guys barely know me. I mean, come on, just because I make videos doesn't mean we're like tight, okay? So all the people that are saying I made a mistake, or all the people saying I made a great decision, they don't understand because they don't know what IBM is offering me, and they don't know what cost it comes at. You don't only want to measure this with dollars. That's because not having a job is usually going to be less dollars than the job. You also want to measure it with control and, or power, essentially. So by having the job, you are basically sacrificing control. The job is going to control you. Whereas with no job or an alternative job that has less pay, you might have more control of your life and the kinds of things you are working on. 
This may have been a big motivator for me, at least in this time in my life, why I left, because working at one of the, the very large tech companies, there is a lot of competition. And creating content in an open manner all here on the internet is very challenging to do when your employer is basically competing with all of the major tech companies. So if a job such as IBM controls 80% of your life and the alternative to leave the job or pursue a different job only controls 20% of your life, then you should leave your job. Obviously, this is more simple in nature than to actually do it. A lot of things have to line up just for you to be able to, to get up and leave a job. But eventually things lined up and I had the opportunity and I took that jump. The reason is because I believe the cost of keeping the job was very high. I ultimately felt that the opportunities by not having the job were worth more than what the job was paying me. And I looked at that very uh, down to earth and tried to avoid the the feelings of working at this fancy company that's going to be impressive on my resume and just started to look at what are they paying me and what could I be doing if I wasn't working here? <laughs> what am I giving up in order to keep this job that wasn't exactly making me happy and wasn't exactly fulfilling the needs I had in my life at the time? Another big reason I left this job is that although there was some serious growth opportunities and I had opportunities to go into software development, I was not in a, a software development or software engineering role. I was in more of a, a social strategy, social media, developer evangelism, and some speaking role. So I had like this marketing role with, with like a flair of development, with a, with a flair of social influencer work. So basically doing the kind of stuff I do here on the YouTube channel, but doing it for IBM. So just because IBM offered this swanky job with the huge pay <laughs> doesn't mean that's what I wanted in my life. There is more to life than just that. So yeah, that's why. I'm a homegrown body. I didn't really particularly f enjoy moving across the country, sacrificing the majority of my days to pursuing skills in a career field path that wasn't of interest to me when I had already built up so much experience in software development. So it was a great opportunity. I'm glad I took it. If I got the opportunity, well, if I could go back in time and I got the opportunity again, I'd probably take it. But I, I'm glad to be free of that for now until the next adventure in my life. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys and your career paths. What kind of jobs would you leave or take or Give me a little bit of information about your career. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. <sighs> I wish I had an email marketing tool that was ideal for small businesses like mine. You know, one that had all the capabilities of a big email tool but without all that unnecessary noise. Hello! Ah, who are you? I have the tool for you, MailerLite, where anyone can make easy drag and drop newsletters or choose from a variety of templates. How did you get into my house? MailerLite's drag and drop editor has pre-designed blocks for social media, embedded surveys, and video. MailerLite is the tool for you if you want to do anything with segmentation, automation, and more. How did he know? Plus, there's 24 seven customer support with real people. No way, 24 seven customer support with real people? Best of all, it's free. Free! I'll sign up right now! Wait, so who are you again? Oh, I'm, I'm you from the future. No way, really? So, I'm still doing YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah, you're still doing YouTube. Do I have millions of subscribers? No, 